queso and welcome everybody today's video finds us in a place that's been on my bucket list for um, basically my whole life after i learned that there was actually this uh, place in existence anyway where we are today is we are in durango spain and the reason it's on my bucket list is i graduated high school and college from durango colorado and this is one of the sister cities of durango there's a durango mexico durango spain and a durango colorado so i've now been to two of the three Durangos and this is up in the Basque country and I'm really really excited to walk through here and look at this today so we're gonna go and uh, see what we see and enjoy this. And my first impressions of this place is this is out of sight and uh, just an amazing place. This is beautiful. The whole area here in the Basque country is amazing. I can't even describe what all you see here. You're driving around through the like these little windy mountain roads and you look over there'll be this old white and brown brick house or stone house and uh, you see just beautiful views all through the area. So this is the first part of Durango. So we're greeted with this humongous church and we have a gate and it looks like the old town is right up here. And the first thing we see is the Santa Ana Eliza Church. And it's right here, check this out. You have this cool little waterfall, some stone buildings over there. And it looks like this is closed up so we won't be able to see and then we have this really cool gate here. This is the Santa Ana Arcua gate. And if you want, if you have like an image of like a charming little village in your mind, you can't be far away from this right here. This is so cool. This gate is fantastic. So you have the little seal right there, the shield. And then check out this building here with the little flowers, the little stone balcony, and then the river just going right here that's just crystal clear. Ah, so beautiful. And right here in front of the church is this little courtyard with the old buildings. Uh, yeah, and it looks like this is closed up. I would absolutely love to go in there and see some of the uh, stained glass and everything. You can see their houses have the little balconies. Oh, this is really, really cool. Looks like the old wall there, and they've tore this down and added this new building over here. And you can see the mountains off in the distance. And then this church just towers over downtown Durango. Yeah, this is beautiful. Now, like I said, it was on my bucket list, so I drove all day to get here to see this. This was uh, on my list. So I drove all the way from Barcelona up here to Durango. So you got the little Bar El Arco. Really cool. So let's walk down into this. Ah, just how cool is this? So you have all the little stores here all along the way. Ah, oh, fantastic. Their houses are up above here. Uh, dental clinic of Durango and you got little clothing stores ah, really cool and you see how they have their little flowers and stuff up on the balconies it's the small things in life that make me happy and going and seeing stuff like this to nobody to anybody else this would not be a big deal but this is so cool for me to be able to see Maybe one of these days I'll make it to Durango, Mexico, since I have just the one more to see. Oh, wow. Check out all of those murals up there. You have another little courtyard. Oh, this is, oh, that is really, really cool. And you got the Athletic Club Bilbao, which is, Bilbao is like the biggest city here in the Basque Country. I actually would really like to find a shirt from them. 
I might be able to while we're down here. If so, I'll make the purchase. I'm gonna check out all these little streets. Oh, this is really, really cool. So you have things like this. You have like fruits and vegetables and all the, the bread. Bread seems to be a pretty big part of their diet here. You see it all over. All these little sandwiches, these little baguettes, and they are quite delicious. Get it with like fish or pork or chicken. You have a barber shop, the Barbaria. That's <laughs> just really cool. Yeah, so this is why I travel, is you go to places like this, just wander the streets, see how they live. There's another athletic club for Bilbao. They won the Champions League last year, which was a pretty big deal. I actually watched the victory parade on uh, the internet. Looks like they're doing something here, repairing or tearing down, remodeling and building new. I made it down to the end of the street. <laughs> and this place is just so cool. So we have some uh, local setup with a little market here and we're right near this humongous church. And it looks like it's closed up also. But maybe it might be open. We'll see if we can pop our head in there. And you see all the little winding streets. And I tell you, in the Basque country here, they just absolutely love all of these outdoor patio things. They just sit here in the evening. First thing in the morning, they open up and there's already people hanging out, sitting in all these chairs. So this looks like the Calle Andra Maria. Now this church was destroyed in the 1937, I believe, during the Spanish Civil War. Guernica, which is another Basque town, was about 85% destroyed by the Luftwaffe. The Germans bombed it. They were supporting Franco. And over here in Durango, there were a couple of munitions factories. So this was actually an important town. So there was quite a bit of fighting around here also. It's been a long time since I read about my Spanish Civil War history. I remember quite a bit about it. It was uh, an interesting time. There was a lot of uh, Europeans and Americans that went to fight against Franco. They were what, the, the fourth or the fourth column, I think is what they called themselves. And eventually Franco did win the Civil War and he actually kind of betrayed uh, the Nazis, the Central Powers, in that he stayed neutral during the war. But I think that there was just so many people that were killed and injured and just everything was destroyed that there just wasn't you know there wasn't the will plus the ability to fight so this is really really cool okay so let's see if we can go in here oh wow oh wow now this is amazing saying something about there, the El Pueblo of Durango, November 1945. And this is what you see here. Just this huge dome. You see a little bit of stained glass up there. I hope it comes out on the camera and that big organ. Yeah, this is really nice. I'm glad the door's open and just nobody's in here to pray, but the locals could if they were if they were so inclined. And so the priest would be up here. And just beautiful. Yeah, this one here, you can tell that it's quite a bit newer than some of the other churches I've seen with it being destroyed during the Civil War. But it's still quite beautiful inside. Yeah, I really like it. This makes you wonder, why don't we build things like this anymore? Most everything is just concrete and just kind of ugly, but stuff like this is beautiful. And it doesn't matter, I'm not Catholic, but I still really love to see these uh, Catholic churches. And you have these little shrines and stuff around. Yeah, I don't see where they burn the candles. Usually there's a place for that. Maybe that's over here where they'll set the candles out. And I didn't see any holy water when we come in, but they may have, they may have something. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this must be the place where they set the holy water over here. And then they have a body of Jesus. Yeah, so they have the place here. So they would set the candles on this little shelf. And there, there he is. 
Okay, so let's walk, walk around a little bit more in Durango and see what this little town has. We're back outside. That's the way we came in. How fantastic is that? And then just the local produce out here. Let's see what they grow. There's a lot of farming all through Spain. I was actually pretty surprised at the amount of land that is under cultivation. So many grapes and olives and corn. It's pretty amazing. And you can go and you can get, uh, like you eat lunch and some places will give you like a bottle of wine to drink with your lunch. They do like to drink the wine here. And some more of these little houses and stuff. Ah, oh, just really quite cool. This is a really nice look at this church. Ah, really cool. You see it's pretty chilly, but it's nice with the sun, if you're in the direct sun. I think it's like 10 or 11 degrees. A nice brisk morning. Yeah, I really miss a little bit of the season changes in Thailand, because it's always so hot. When you come to places like this, it's kind of nice to wake up and it's nice and cool, or you can sleep with the window open. Uh, it's fantastic to be able to enjoy that a little bit. In Thailand, it's just always so hot. Oh, that is really cool. And check out this cool building. It's right behind the church. Yeah, I'm not sure what this is about. I don't know if it's a market. It has this stuff in the front. Let's stick our head in and see what it looks like. And yeah, they call this Makuta Plaza. So this is just a little market. It looks like about everything's closed except for the butcher. You can get the pachunga de gallo, one dozen of the huevos brates. So you get it's a free dozen eggs, I guess. Yeah, there must be a special time for this. We're just not here. Yeah, inside the market, everything's closed up, but this is kind of cool. The murals and stuff outside here. It would have been kind of fun if that market was in full swing, but it is what it is. We have another part of it over here. It looks like it's quite a big open area, so this would be like the farmer's market. There's a few people in here, but not a whole lot. And this doubles as a gym, it looks like, for the a basketball court for the kids. Yeah, really a, a cool little town. Yeah, I don't know when this little town was established, but most of these places go back seven, eight hundred years or so. And they were probably built on other towns that were here before them. There's been people here for, as an American, our cities are all new, but here these are so old in comparison. You can see the hills and stuff all around. And it just has all these little windy roads like this, courtyards, people doing their thing here. And here's that little river that is at the other end of town now. We've walked all the way through. That'll finish up our video over here in Durango, Spain. We've walked through the majority of the old town that's down here. This is really a charming little place. It's uh, not a place where most of the tourists go. It's just the locals going about doing their, uh, their thing. But I love to see this. And like I said at the start, this is kind of one of those places I have always dreamed of uh, visiting, and here I am. So my bucket list got one smaller. And I'm sure I'll add 15 more things that I want to see to that list that uh, got a little bit smaller today. But anyway, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video of a quick little walkabout here in the old town. If you did enjoy it, smash the like button and uh, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. If you've been here or if you know more about old Durango here in Spain, let me know in a comment down below or uh, just tell me your, your thoughts on it. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe and then you get to see more stuff like this that I show you, things that I see and do. And if you like that, then you're at the right place. And anyway, from over here in Durango, Spain, as the locals and Basques say, Aguna, which means goodbye. Remember, life is a journey. Until next time, enjoy. Enjoy.